During this how-to training video, you will learn several ways to go about designing an HD robotic camera system. We will begin with image sensor technology. In the past, the only cameras worth buying had CCD image sensors, and the best cameras were three CCD, where the light was divided into three colors, processed individually, and the most vivid and accurate color images were produced. These three CCD cameras were, and still are, quite expensive. Because of the restrictions of the CCD sensor, none of the sensors were Full HD 1920 by 1080 native, so development ran its course. Investment by the image sensor manufacturers was directed at improving the less costly CMOS image sensor. A few years ago, CMOS image sensors in PTZ robotic cameras were light hungry, noisy, dim, and had less clarity than CCD image sensor technology. Today, the Exmor image sensor, using advances in technology unavailable to CCD technology, the resolution, saturation, and sensitivity of the CMOS sensor are increased dramatically. What all this means is that at a lower price point, a single CMOS image sensor is capable of producing images comparable to the three CCD cameras. Everything that was learned in producing CCD sensors was applied to the innovation of the Exmor sensor, and a more efficient light gathering method was the result. When determining what quality camera is required for your project, you will first need to establish if standard definition video or high definition video is required. If your application is going to include streaming or other compressed video applications, it may be more appropriate to use SD for these types of applications, as a larger image only means more compression. Another reason is cost, and although the pricing of HD cameras is getting more and more reasonable, SD cameras are still less expensive than their HD counterparts. However, if the application requires iMag image magnification, high quality recordings, or any other professional video quality applications, HD will give you a clearer image with the higher resolution versus SD, which would give you a more grainy image with the lower resolution. HD is the better choice in this application. When locating the cameras in your design, you should pay close attention to camera viewing angles, lighting conditions, possible line of sight obstructions, and obstructions where the camera is to be mounted. In an office environment, place the camera away from fluorescent lighting fixtures and open windows. Avoid having the ceiling and lighting fixtures in the shot. The direct light will have negative effects on the camera. In houses of worship, lighting can be exceptionally challenging. Because direct sunlight can be problematic, arrange the cameras so sunlight will not be in the background of the camera's point of view. One of the biggest design don'ts is trying to cover too large an area with a single PTZ camera. Typically, this can produce a very busy sequence of camera movements for a limited set of rather boring shots. Determining the exact number of cameras needed is part of the art and science. Camera count is highly dependent on the room and locations of the subjects. For a small video conferencing room, a single HD USB camera plugged into a PC with a soft client may be good enough. Larger rooms require a main camera for meeting participants and an additional camera to cover a lectern position at the front of the room. For distance learning and corporate training facilities, a classic 2 plus camera system is needed. One camera at the back of the room would be dedicated to the instructor or presenter. One camera at the front of the room would be for audience and student participation. For houses of worship, the number and placement of cameras are extremely critical. Lighting and color matching the cameras is very important to the production, so consider CCUs in the design. In selecting HD cameras for this application, determine where the cameras are to be located to cover the room adequately and not necessarily through live movement of the camera. While determining the placement of the cameras within a room, the strength of the optical zoom range and horizontal field of view become extremely important. Smaller video conferencing rooms will need a wide-end, horizontal viewing angle of 58 to 70 degrees in order to capture the meeting participants seated at a conference table at a relatively short distance. Because of the size of the room and close-range objects, the optical zoom requirements are lower and a magnification range of 8 to 10 times is adequate. In larger rooms, like houses of worship and auditoriums, the tele-end horizontal viewing angle and magnification requirement are critical for zooming into a presentation area to provide expected results. The tele-end angle for a large room may need to be as small as 2 to 3 degrees with a 19 times or 20x optical zoom range. For determining the image size and optical zoom strength of a candidate HD camera, go to the Vadio website and download the Vadio PTZ image size calculator. 
One of the automatic modes of PTZ cameras is Auto Iris, which estimates how wide to open the iris to collect light based on the image viewed in the sensor. This works in conjunction with gain, which is then added if required to help make the image bright enough for consistent presentation. When gain is added, the image may become grainy and it may be preferable to use the camera in manual mode to allow for a cleaner image to be produced by fine-tuning the individual iris and gain parameters. Digital zoom should always be avoided in video production. Their use tends to cause poor video performance results. Make a point of not zooming in fully. Slight vibrations at the camera can manifest themselves as unstable looking video with large amounts of zoom. An appropriate zoom for the shot of a presenter would frame that person with the bottom of the shot at thigh level and a headspace of a foot or more. This results in a shot height of around 60% of the presenter's height. Depending on the requirements of the application, a long-range wiring scheme or a CCU may be a great addition to the design. Since the inception of Vadio, the extension of power, video, and control over CAT5 cabling has been key. The Quick Connect CCU allows users to adjust or paint the color balance, adjust the iris level, pedestal, and gain levels remotely, all while delivering video, power, and control over three CAT5 cables up to 500 feet away. Setting up a CCU falls into two areas, aperture and color or painting setup. Aperture. If a poor lighting situation requires manually setting the iris, disable auto iris, open the iris setting to the lowest f-stop, reduce iris gain as much as possible while maintaining shot brightness, and adjust the detail control as needed to soften the look. Reducing the f-stop will decrease the depth of field, but this will be sufficient for most situations. Painting. If color correction is needed before or after iris adjustments, disable auto white balance, then adjust pedestal so black areas look black and not gray. Dial in as much chroma as desired, then use the individual color controls to correct the color of the shot, paying close attention to blue and red. The best use of color correction always uses skin color as a reference. The Quick Connect Pro series for Sony and Panasonic cameras deliver power, video, and control up to 500 feet. Great for applications with controlled lighting, where auto iris and white balance are acceptable. The Quick Connect DVI HDMI short range and Quick Connect short range interfaces are for the Vadio HD20, HD19, and HD18 cameras. These interfaces extend power, video, and control, and IR up to 100 feet over two Cat5 cables. For control, the Quick Connect DVI HDMI short range has a daisy chain emulation mode for daisy chaining multiple cameras at the head end and it supports IR forwarding for use with Cisco and Polycom codecs. The Quick Connect short range systems are ideal for video conferencing, distance learning classrooms and other applications where auto modes for iris and white balance are adequate. Vadio manufactures and sells a large variety of camera mounts in all different shapes and sizes. Ensure all mounts are installed solidly any free play in the mounting will show up as movement in the video during heavy zoom use. Maximum cable length should be observed and inclusive of any additional cable requirements due to drop mount pipe lengths, suggested tension relief loops, and terminal area requirements. Cameras should be mounted high enough to comply with safety and code requirements, but low enough to maintain a comfortable looking shot as close as possible to a standing human's perspective. Lighting for PTZ cameras would follow the same guidelines as for any other type of still or motion camera. Uniform lighting of 100 lux or better is required, similar to a well-lit office environment. Specifically, lighting in the 3200 to 5600 degree Kelvin range is needed. A combination of different light fixture types could be used to balance light across this spectrum for the best color balance. LED only lamps can be used, but their light frequency may fall out of this suggested range so care must be used for their implementation. Avoid overly light or dark backdrops, especially when a presenter is wearing contrasting clothing. These conditions can cause undesired contrast or even blooming in the camera view. Highly glossy backgrounds can cause reflective hotspots which can be distractive. Using diffusion gels in the lighting fixtures can help remedy those situations. Windows in a shot's background are also to be avoided. Their rear lighting can cause difficult shading problems, preventing a natural looking production. We have covered a lot of information and options to consider when designing a high definition PTZ camera system. You now have the ability to design and understand what is needed for a successful high definition PTZ camera installation. If you need help in your design, 
Visit www.vadio.com to find out more about the high-definition PTZ cameras and other Vadio products, or contact our sales department.